Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti, Thursday, March 19th, 2015. And here are some of today's trends in the news. Well, of course, the big trend was yesterday's trend that's now gone into today's trend. And that was the old trend, the central banks in control. Remember your top trend for 2015? One of them, bankism. Needed no more proof of it than yesterday. So, yesterday those markets shot up from being down 150 poof, to well over 220. And today, what happened? Well, it's another day. The markets are down over 100. And, hey, remember what happened to oil yesterday? Well, oil's halfway back from where it was. And how about gold? Eh, gold's looking good. How come? Well, they're saying now that the central banks are going to keep that Ponzi scheme going. And I'm changing the word. As an Italian-American, I am offended that they keep calling it a Ponzi scheme. Hey, how about a Greenspan scheme? That's the cat that started this big game, man, when he became Fed chair back in the 80s and started juicing the markets. Hey, how about a Bernanke scam? Could anybody say that? How about a Yellen scam? Because that's all this is. So stop with the Ponzi, man. Ponzi was a small-time player compared to these central bankers. This is Wall Street welfare. Hey, don't let, make sure those people don't get food stamps. No, we got to give all the dough to the Wall Street welfare. Kings and queens, man. This is a disgrace. Nothing like it in history. Here's some numbers that haven't been reported very widely. In that Fed statement, the new estimates for the federal fund rate by the end of 2015, 2016, and 2017 were sharply reduced than the estimates that they gave at their last lying session. The U.S. bank forecasts a rate of 0.625% at the end of this year, a drop of 500 basis points, or more than 40%, from its previous projection of 1.125. It is a disgrace. It is America. Here you go. Yardini. This is Ed Yardini of Yardini Research. He's a member of the White Shoe Boy Club, and he's quoted on CNBC today. Yardini, markets rigged. It is what it is. The stock market is rigged. You ready? Now here's White Shoe Boy back off, suck up, bow down talk. Hey, Salenti. Be respectful. Maybe they'll put you up there on CNBC and you could shove the crap out too. Do it nice and they'll swallow it because here's what he says. The market is rigged, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Strategist Ed Yardini said Thursday, quote, quote, I love these central bankers. Hey, Ed. You got it for Faccia Bruta? You in love with that man? They've been very good to the stock market. Oh, yeah, man. They've been great for the stock market. Hey, 8,000 back when quantitative easing began? Boop! Over 18,000 yesterday. But how about the rest of the people? Oh, we had those numbers, remember? Yeah, the money on Wall Street, the bonus is worth double what people on minimum wage in the United States get added all together. But I will continue. This is not about investing. This is all about 
the central bankers. These markets are all rigged. And I don't say that critically. No, you wouldn't criticize. Don't you criticize. You be a good boy, Eddie. This is a disgrace. It's in front of everybody's eyes. It is the cover of the Trends Journal. The grand manipulation. It's right there, but nobody talks about it because they pump it up nice. I just say it factually, he says. Isn't that nice? Hey, more good news. Mortgage applications fall 3.9%. Hey, how's that for a recovery? Average 30-year mortgage, 3.78. Last year at this time, 4.32. Hey, but Eddie, Eddie boy, what did you say over here? I love these central bankers. They've been good to the stock market. They've been good to the welfare kings and queens, the people that have destroyed this nation. Thank you, Bill Clinton, man, the cat that made it possible for the last go-around. Greenspan, Bernanke, and Yellen. No more Ponzi. Let's call... A spade a spade. And what else do we have here today? Trouble in Frankfurt. That's right. Whew. Big rallies going over there. They call it uh, Blockupy. And what they've been doing is they're protesting the European Central Bank's new headquarters. And about 17,000 people showed up. And the police didn't like that, so they started beating them up. And then when the people react, that's all they show are the burning police cars. They don't show the police water cannoning people, rubber bulleting them, and beating the hell out of them. They do it all the time. I remember when they had the Battle of Seattle, when they started protesting the World Trade Organization in 1999, all they showed were a couple of agents provocateurs breaking windows at this massive, massive peaceful demonstration. And then they push it out of the news and make it seem like it's a radical movement. And what are they protesting? Yes, the new European Central Bank building in Frankfurt that cost... $1.4 billion. No, man, I say austerity measures. Could you imagine putting these people in a $1.4 billion building? Of course you can. Eddie would love it. It's the perfect thing to do because I love these central bankers, he says. And why not give the billionaires a place that cost more than a billion. They deserve it. Huh. But more problems over there. In that oil market, T-bone pickings. Big story here. Financial Times tells U.S. Shale to cut output. T-bone pickings, the influential Texas oil billionaire, said the U.S. shale industry has overproduced and must cut back to lift crude prices rather than wait for Saudi Arabia to lower its output. That's right. Make the prices go up so T-Bone can get more billions and it'll cost us more money. Great advice, T-Bone. Huh, Brent below $55. Kuwait comments refocus on oversupply. Brent crude fell back below $55 a barrel after Kuwait said OPEC had no choice but to keep production steady. Hey, T-Bone, you should have told the Kuwaitis and the Saudis they're going against you. They're going to keep producing, everybody is, because they need the dough. And the economy, as we're seeing by the housing sales, by the retail sales, by all the sales, everything's slowing down. One of our top trends, price wars. 
Oil giants abandon shale plays outside the U.S., Wall Street Journal. After spending more than five years and billions of dollars trying to recreate the U.S. shale boom overseas, some of the world's biggest oil companies are starting to give up amid worldwide collapse in crude prices. Chevron, Exxon, Royal Dutch Shell. Gone and on. Chevron halted its last European fracking operation in February when it pulled out of Romania. Shell said it's cutting worldwide shell spending by 30% in places including Turkey, Ukraine, Argentina. Ukraine? Hey. You remember brought to you by uh, Chevron and Exxon Mobil, Victoria Newland? And now you're not going to frack anymore? Yeah. And some other news on the fine, big, a lot of financial stuff going on. Swedish krona weakens sharply after surprise rate cut. Sweden cut its main policy rate deeper into negative territory as the central bank underlined its desire to weaken its currency in the midst of what economists have called a global currency war. Oh, they called it that. We only call that it was going to happen two years ago, so we could call it a currency war, too. (laughs) They cut its repo or repurchase rate from minus 0.1% to minus 0.25% yesterday and increased its quantitative easing program. It's all one big scam, man. That's all this is. Hey... But I love those central bankers if I'm a big gambler on Wall Street. No one has ever seen anything like this in the history of the world. Target says it will raise wages too. Oh yeah, fat times for those people. They're going to pay $9 an hour. Wow, yeah. Great, that'll make you rich. It's a global takeover. It's a concentration of wealth assets in the hands of a very few. Whether it's in retail, whether it's in oil, whether it's in pharmaceuticals, drugstores, you name it, throughout the world and throughout the country. And on to some international news, great news. We could all rest nice tonight. U.S. drone kills Al-Shabaab leader in Somalia, Pentagon. Yeah, we got another one of them people who the U.S. believes, believes was overseeing operations that target U.S. persons and other Western interests. Yeah, murder. Murder. Hey, The fish rots in the head down. You know all these cops that are blowing people away? I wonder how many of them come from the military that are whacked out on these psychotropic drugs, suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome, shot up with steroids, because here's another cop gone wild. How you doing, man? What's going on? Oh, this is off the chain. Incoherent. Who's that? They're chopping up people in the sun. Bipolar schizo. What's going on? You drop that for me. Drop that for me, guy. Jay! Drop it. Jay! Drop it. Jay! Drop it. Jay! 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 So there you have it. Look at this guy holding a little screwdriver. That's enough to kill him. But when a cop gets shot, boy, it's a big deal. This society's going down big time. Murder is just another day in America, slaughtering people all over the world and slaughtering them at home. This guy wasn't dangerous. The woman comes out. She's not screaming and yelling. She goes, points to a kid, comes out. He's holding, was this kid playing with his uh, DVD player or something, fixing his computer? Hold, he's holding a screwdriver. And that's all it is. Hey, you know what else today is? The 80th anniversary of the Monopoly game. And that's what it is. It's a monopoly. The top rules. 
There's no get out of jail free cards for us, only for the Wall Street gang. And hey, you see what they did with that guy Petraeus, who has betrayed us so many times? Yeah, got caught giving classified information to his girlfriend, remember? Yeah, gave him a slap on the wrist, while the rest of the people like Snowden and Bradley Manning and Assange, yeah, they go to jail or they want to throw you in jail. It's a monopoly from top to bottom. It's a takeover. And if people just keep sitting back and taking it, the takeover is going to come to a city, a town, and a country near you. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News.